Governor Gavin Newsom is sharing some hope about our new normal and California getting back to work. And while there's still a lot that needs to be figured out here, there are things employers can start preparing for right now. Joining us on the phone is employment lawyer with Cozen O'Connor, Ed Langhammer. Ed, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Good morning, Eric. Thank you for having me on. So, Ed, even when these businesses do open back up here with COVID-19 risks, what steps will these employers need to take to ensure the safety of their employees and their potential customers? There, there's going to be a balancing of interest, just more generally. We're going to be guided by public health requirements. As you just mentioned, Governor Newsom has said very clearly what some of the guidance is with respect to opening businesses. We're going to be looking at worker privacy rights. We're going to be looking at anti-discrimination laws, disability, age, race. But some of the do's and don'ts for employers to think about with respect to employees, getting ready to bring those employees back, is, or, I'm just going to go through a quick checklist of things employers should be thinking about. In encourage employees to self-report illness. If they have temperatures, if they have symptoms, take employees' temperatures. Assess symptoms prior to letting them start work. If someone gets sick during the day, send them home. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have protective equipment in place, face masks, face coverings, gloves. Provide disinfectant sanitary wipes. Disinfect and clean your workspace as often as you need to. Physical distancing, hugely important. Don't allow employees to congregate in break rooms. Employees have responsibilities, too. They should take their own temperatures before coming to work. Wear their face masks, wear their coverings, respect employees' rights to uh, not congregate, not socialize. Don't share your headsets or objects that can go near your faces. And again, practice social distancing and don't forget, wash your hands frequently. Yeah, definitely. What if what if there's employers out there that, that you know, they want to get back to work, but they want to take things to the next level, let's say. Can they require a negative test before hiring? Can they monitor employees' activities to make sure that they're not, you know, engaging in risky behavior, like going to the beach or a movie theater? I mean, what, what are the rules there? <laughs> First of all, it's an interesting day when we say going to the beach can be a risky behavior. Right, exactly. But having said that. By having said that, I, I do think it's going to be, again, it's going to be this balancing of interest. And employees still have areas of privacy. We've, uh, as lawyers and labor lawyers, we've traditionally recognized employers have rights to privacy, what they do on their time, on their, uh, on, on their own activities are protected and private. So employers need to be very careful and cautious. Mm -hmm. Given these rights to privacy and disability and these zones of privacy, they have to be respectful of that. However, now, employees can be encouraged to self-report, sure. and I think that's going to be critically important. With PPE so hard to find, because you were mentioning it, how can employers protect their employees, and are those employers liable if an employee uh, gets sick or dies based on exposure at work? Yeah, great questions. Um, so it's going to look different when we start coming back to work. It's going to be a, a, new, a new normal. Mm -hmm. um, so with, res with respect to um, when businesses are allowed to reopen and how they're going to be allowed to reopen, I mean, I think some of the issues are going to be making sure employees are allowed to telework if telework's available, mm -hmm. uh, limiting customer and client contact. Every other workstation may be occupied instead of every workstation. Every other machine may be occupied and working. Virtual meetings, limiting travel, we're, again, worker responsibilities, a two-way street, employers, employees need to protect themselves, protect their coworkers, to the point of if someone is exposed in the workplace and may have been injured, if it can be objectively determined that there's been a workplace exposure to COVID-19, then under California law, that would be something that would be covered under our state workers' compensation systems. And so if a work mm -hmm. worker is injured, that same, that if you break your arm, you break your leg at work, it's exactly the same thing. You gotcha. have protection under workers' compensation. And, and workers' compensation does provide for a death benefit if, in fact, there's that unfortunate incident where there's a work-related injury that results in somebody's death. All right, that sounds good. Ed, thanks so much. You're right. Interesting times we are in. We appreciate your advice, your guidance, and suggestions there. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Stay safe and stay strong. You as well, sir. Thanks again.